Hi, Fred. Uh, many thanks for accepting our invitation and uh, to talk with us and the team from Future Ability about your experience or your understanding of digital storytelling within online learning and assessment. Uh, before starting our conversation, could you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Hi, Antonio. Thank you for inviting me. So my name is Fred Dalmaso. I am a lecturer in drama at Loughborough University and I teach a practical uh, discipline. And actually everything I do is through practice. Even theoretical modules that I teach, I uh, tend to uh, find a practical way to approach them. So I know that digital storytelling is not your main area of expertise, but um, could you please share with us your understanding of what digital storytelling is? So uh, my understanding, uh, is that digital storytelling is a, is a way or a tool or a platform uh, to give uh, a, the opportunity to somebody to talk about themselves and uh, their, their own stories and um, using um, digital tools, technology, so that it's accessible, so that everybody could almost do it. And it involves some... Um, perhaps kind of um, techniques or some guidance from somebody to help people um, develop their own discourse or their own story uh, digitally. That's uh, an excellent, excellent definition. Uh, and actually, yeah. I hope that we do, we can also expand this definition the more. Yeah, because it's actually. very difficult to define anything, but especially digital storytelling seems to be expanding uh, daily uh, so uh, this definition is not set in stone at all and as you say i'm not a specialist so uh, no it's great it's great but sometimes today yeah but it's a it's a great way of actually synthesizing the key the key component of the process and also the key elements that could be applied within online learning and assessment i guess so have you ever thought to apply digital storytelling in your practice in teaching uh, your 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 practical subject that you will tell us what it is. Well, so what happened is that and we had to face a situation uh, in our teaching with uh, the COVID nineteen situation where all of a sudden a lot of our teaching was done online and with a practical subject like drama. It's quite difficult to do this. So little by little, uh, we set up, well, I tried to find solutions and, uh, and uh, perhaps I ended up doing digital storytelling without knowing it at first. And then we discussed and we worked together um, uh, and, uh, and we found some yeah, digital storytelling solutions to deliver these modules, these teaching modules. And uh, yeah, and some doors opened uh, in terms of collaboration with students. And what is interesting in what happened, but we can talk about it in more details, is that he, he shifted uh, attitudes to learning. I, I, I witnessed that with the students. Uh, the necessity to do something, to find a solution, to find an online solution, and uh, also the necessity to, because of that, to, to work even more collaboratively with students. So what, what was then, so you response let's say to to an emergency let's say brought you to experiment with uh, with a new technique that let's say we define it as digital storytelling so um what what happened so what did you ask them to produce and what were you expecting to assess uh, through this production through this creative process okay so uh the module i was referring to uh, was um a module called Theater in the Community. So, uh, given the circumstances, no theater and uh, no accessible community, that was a bit of a challenge. And, uh, and that's what we had to face. So we found solutions to try to uh, get back to the fundamentals of this module, why we were doing a module called Theater in the Community. So go back to the skills that the students should acquire doing the modules. And we try to transpose that into a digital world. 
and that included revising assessment, um, learning content, and especially the way students were um, uh, working together with one another, but also with us. So I understand that in this particular case, and probably in your teaching philosophy, I think learning and assessment are interlinked. So they are not two separate things. Yes, exactly. So uh, when I teach, I tend to um, either spread out the assessments so that they, they're not necessarily at the end, uh, to insist on the fact that the assessment is part of a, a learning process for any module you teach. And with practical disciplines, perhaps it's, it's a bit easier to do. I don't know. Uh, but yes, I completely see assessment as part of a, of a learning process. And I, I try to uh, help students understand this. That's why uh, I tend to set up some assessments that are uh, in the long run across several weeks as opposed to keep that at the end as a kind of test. It's more of a process that is assessed and that includes peer assessment as well. So it becomes something that is not an obstacle or a test, but a, a process and so a part of the learning process. Oh, that's great. So from what you say, actually, digital storytelling sounds the ideal too, because it's it's a process mainly. So it's a, it's a reflective process and it's collaborative, so it invites people to actually work together. And even if the output is quite essential because it's the production of a short video, actually the process is the, is the unique experience for, for the people who are involved in it. And therefore, as a teacher myself, I would think, oh, actually... I would enjoy more assessment if I can spread it out throughout the process and not just as a, as a marking exercise to tick boxes at the end of a production of an output. So that, that's a great opportunity for us as educators, I think, as well. D definitely. And um, we got these um, uh, categories, different categories of assessment. Um, but I always struggle with uh, the idea of a formative assessment or in a reflective assessment. And to be honest, I tend to merge the two into one. And I mentioned doors opening earlier and definitely the, the idea of being obliged to work digitally uh, and remotely uh, led us to um, reconsider the form of the assets assessment itself. So mm -hmm. it started to make sense, uh, given uh, the students' access to technology and the way we were teaching and receiving learning and exchanging um, our knowledge, it, it started to make sense not to ask for a written um, uh, assessment, a written piece, at the end, a reflective written piece, but um, rather a, a kind of behind the scene documentary, if you like, where students were encouraged to document their progress as they went along. And because the technology was all around us then, it, it made perfect sense to ask them to record this. And uh, we ended up with um, digital journals uh, following the each student learning process. And in doing that, that's when I realized working with you, Antonio, is that that was very close to what digital storytelling is about because uh, the personal story about a learning journey is very, very, very close to, to what a, a digital storytelling is in terms of self discovery um, and uh, self expression and so on. But you're the expert, so you can tell me more about that, perhaps. I mean, we are, we are all the experts when we work with our students and we teach our own subjects. So actually, I was thinking about top tips for our colleagues. And if I had to share my top tip, just following on on what you were just saying, mm -hmm. my way of approaching digital storytelling would be actually to make sure that we are all tailoring this approach to the needs of the cohort of students we are working with mm -hmm. and to the you know, the achievements, we want them to actually uh, self-assess. So I see digital storytelling as a brilliant, versatile, flexible tool 
that we can all apply to make sure that our students, they become more self-conscious about the, their own process of learning and their own understanding of why it's important to learn. So I think that the meta-learning experience of digital storytelling would be, from my perspective, the most meaningful for us as educators and for our students. So yeah. any top tip for you? Yeah, I totally agree. And also, um, because of a different form of assessment in the form of a, a video or a personal a digital story, it, it, it makes um, this process more shareable with others. So we, we go away from this um, individual assessment uh, format that we have in practical disciplines. And it's always a very difficult uh, thing to do because uh, we work collaboratively in theater and drama is always a collaborative process. So isolating students and marking them individually or assessing them individually is difficult. And yet it's also important that they all have an individual journey. Uh, individual journeys uh, through their learning and, and through their relations with uh, knowledge, learning and teaching and also their peers. So what digital storytelling provides, I think, is a great tool to have these personal journeys, but also because of their form, uh, a video most of the time or a, a sound recording, it, it's much easier to, to, to share. But nobody, uh, no student will read somebody else's essay. Uh, well, they might, but they might not be that interested. But when it becomes a behind the scene uh, documentary, small documentary or a digital storytelling output, it's far uh, easier to share that and to put it together and also to show to the next cohort of students doing the module the year after. And it becomes uh, a sharing of personal learning experiences and digital storytelling uh, uh, facilitates this, definitely. 